Hello and welcome to Ulla International Great Food with an Accent. I'm your host and chef Ulla Neumann. On this episode, we are going to have a taste of France with pastries from Patisserie Didier Dumas, a quick stop off in the Caribbean with a taste of Saint Lucia with a special surprise recipe. I will make a traditional German dish and a special treat for the leftovers for when in doubt, don't throw it out. All that and more right here on Ulla International Great Food with an Accent. Way. So we are here at the Old World Food Market in Ayak, New York, and with me is Omar Hergener, who is the manager of the uh, facility. Merhaba, Omar Bey. Nasılsınız? So for those of you who don't speak Turkish, I just asked Ömer Bey how he is doing and he said he's doing very well and I do the same. Uh, Ömer Bey, uh, you had this wonderful German black bread. Uh, do you still have this? Yes, we still have this and we also have a lot of unique products in the store. Okay. Uh, Old World Food Market has been open like three years already uh -huh. and we cater around the Rockland County. So we are happy to be here and then we're happy to give the best service to our customers. Absolutely, that's why I come here, you know, because of all the things you carry, you cannot find in any other supermarket. Exactly. So let's go pick up some bread. Sure, let's go. There are certain things that you will always love and for me, black bread is one of them. So this bread makes me so happy. It reminds me of my, uh, my childhood in Germany. Uh, this is a 100% rye bread with whole kernels. So you eat one slice of it and you top it with whatever you like and you have a whole meal. In fact, this is what we were eating when I was a kid, you know, so it was like our dinner. So as opposed to a uh, hot dinner we have here in the United States most of the time. So this bread comes in a lot of different varieties. And this is actually a real pumpernickel. Uh, what Americans refer to as pumpernickel is a dark bread, but it has really nothing to do with this kind of bread. These are traditional European ingredients, German black bread and French butter. Oh wow, this is really the butter I like, you know, so French butter. So you have so many different kinds. Do you have customers for all of those? Uh, of course, we have different customers for different butters. Uh -huh. And we also have different uh, like uh, butter that people, like unique customers come for uh -huh. different butters. And this president, the, 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 the president uh -huh. butter is the well-known uh -huh. and the, one of the best butters in the market. That's why we sell a lot yeah. of it. And then uh, we're very happy to carry in our store. Yeah, it's a wonderful butter. La Bonne Cuisine au Beurre, oh my God. One thing I love about gourmet markets are the surprises you find along the way. Ooh la la, cornichons. I didn't uh, expect to find them in any supermarket here. So you have quite a selection of those. Are they popular? Yes, very yeah? popular, very popular in uh, gourmet item that mm -hmm. we carry and then we are very proud to have this cornichon. And, yeah. uh, not only we have this, we have a couple of other yeah, uh, brands also. That's really great. Well. So in regular supermarket you only get sweet gherkins, which yeah. are very similar. It's the same vegetable, but these are sour and they are totally different in taste. Yeah, crunchy so, and very yes. tasty. Uh -huh. yes. I love them a lot, you know, so I'm very great nice. to find them here. And the last thing on my shopping list today is Parmigiano Reggiano. So, uh, Parmigiano Reggiano is the last thing I need for today's cooking. And thank you so much for being on the show. I thank you very much too. You're welcome. And ulala. So we'll be right back with more Ula International great food with an accent. Hi, I'm Senator David Carlucci, and you're watching Ula International great food with an accent. You're watching Ula International great food. Today I show you how to make a very nice and simple appetizer with asparagus. I know some of you freak out when you hear the word asparagus, but this is a vegetable that has been around for thousands of years and it's said that also the ancient Egyptians liked it. So the French king Louis XIV had special greenhouses built and he grew asparagus or let it grow for his 
uh, let, her call, let me call her girlfriend, Madame de Pompadour. So the French uh, like to eat the tips, which is actually the most desirable part of the asparagus only, and they call them uh, points d'amour, which translates to love points, oh la la. So asparagus made uh, its way to the United States in about 1850 and has been also a very uh, popular vegetable ever since. So. It's really easy to do, so I wash the asparagus off and then we have to cut the woody part off. So this is uh, the part that looks different than the rest of the asparagus. So it's a little woody, um, but if in doubt, don't throw it out. I will show you what to do with this later on. So the asparagus is now uh, ready to go. I season it a little bit with salt and drizzle it with a little bit of water. Okay. And it's ready to go in the oven. This goes in a 350 degree oven for three minutes. Yes, that's all, three minutes. So, and when it comes out, it will have this vibrant uh, green color that's absolutely wonderful. And here is your finished product. So I rolled asparagus in ham, but you can also roll it in salami, in prosciutto, in cheese, whatever you like. Voila. Mm. Delicious. Asparagus tips the Ulala way. And now for a taste of France with some of the most delicious pastries. This brings me right back to my time as an exchange student in France. Hello and welcome back to Ula International, great food with an accent. I'm here today with Didier Dumas, owner of Didier Dumas Patisserie in Nyack, New York. Bonjour Didier, comment ça va? Ça va bien, là, c'est plaisir de te voir. Oh, okay. Didier, did you always want to become a pastry chef? Uh, as far as I can remember, yes. Oh, wow. I remember I was coming out of school uh -huh. and looking at all the windows of the bakery uh -huh. for hours, yes. Well, that's great. That's so. So you never wanted to do anything else? No, anything else. So that's why, you are, that's why you are so good at it. That's great. And I absolutely love this mango caramel cake. So how do you make it? This one? Yes. Uh, this one is actually some two different light cream. Uh -huh. The bottom one is a mango mousse. OK. The top one is a caramel mousse. Uh -huh with a thin layer of chocolate cake in between. Mm -hmm. And actually, um, I have some ready that I'm going to decorate on the top if you want to wow, put me in the kitchen. I would love to see that. Um, Let's uh, go. Allons-y. Okay, merci. Making the mango caramel cake can be a time-consuming process, but Didier does it in the style of a classic French chef. After baking the cake, he tops it with a caramel glaze and spreads the glaze with a metal spatula. He then heats the metal cake ring to make it easy to remove without damaging it. After that, he removes the protective coating around the sides. Didier finishes the cake by garnishing the top using strawberries brushed with a glaze and adds stylized chocolate shavings to complete this edible piece of art. Ooh la la! Tasty and beautiful to the palate and the eye. Thank you for being on the show today, Didier. Yeah, thank you for coming in and for choosing us. Okay, thank happy. you.
Hello and welcome back to Ula International Great Food with an Accent. Today I have the pleasure to uh, be with my friend Greg Nurse. Hello Greg, how are you? Hi Ula, how are you doing? Greg is a wonderful chef and he will show us a recipe inspired by his uh, native San Lucia. So Greg, what are you going to make for us? I'm going to make a, a curry chicken spring roll. I oh, add a, yeah. I add a little bit of Caribbean and American Asian to okay. the um, so it's recipe. Fusion. It's fusion, yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people don't really like curry, so you know, mm -hmm. you know, I put a little bit of twist, Asian spring roll. Everybody loves spring rolls, mm -hmm. so I figured I'd make a nice appetizer, you know. Okay. And um, you know, we'll see what we have. To yeah. So let me show how you do it. Okay, well, right now we're gonna saute the garlic mm -hmm. and we're gonna cook the curry. So um, pan's hot. I'm gonna add the garlic in there. Oh, I like that sound. So, add the curry. Keep stirring it. Get a nice, oh, already... smoky curry flavor. This is actually coming together beautifully here, Ola. Nice Caribbean flavor here. Mm -hmm. um, and wait. So, and we're gonna put the chicken. Mm -hmm. So, this gonna... is chicken breast. Could you use other parts of the chicken if they were shredded? Absolutely. Yeah. You can use the chicken legs mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So, so as long as it has yeah. no bones and no skin, it's okay, yeah. right? Now it's, um, it's kind of um, dry, so I can add a little bit of water in here. Okay. You know, a, a, a touch of water. Mm -hmm. Simply to combine the second. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're gonna mix. Yeah. We're gonna mix good. Yeah. A little bit of salt. Mm -hmm. A little bit of pepper for flavor. Yeah. So the curry is it a real spicy curry or? Uh, the curry is mild. It's not spicy. Uh, a lot of people think curry is um, spicy, mm -hmm. but it's really not. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just a uh, uh, spice. Mm -hmm. And uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this aside. Okay. And we're gonna let it cool. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do a egg wash because mm -hmm. we're gonna need um, a nice egg wash. So this is to keep the, the spring roll together or does yes. it go in the inside the spring roll? No, this is actually to keep, to actually seal the edges. Okay. So we're gonna put it around the, um, and seal the edges. Um, Egg roll wrapper, you can get it yeah. any Asian mm -hmm. store. You know, you can get it in your local supermarket. And uh, yeah, great. And not only curry chicken, but you can use anything. Right. If you have yeah. leftovers and you know. Absolutely. Anything in a, it's just like a pizza. Everything left over on a pizza day school. Yes. Everything left over in a spring roll day school. Absolutely. So, matter of fact, I'll just show you how I would julienne the. Um, I'll just slice them like this, mm -hmm. just chewing in pretty nice. And then we can try this one in, um, in the other one. Mm -hmm. So again, we're gonna take the egg wash just to seal, and this is only sealing the, you know, the spring roll. Okay. Yeah. Sticking together. Okay, so stick together. Take a nice curry. In the center. Mm -hmm. And as a julienne. This probably would also be very nice to be done with shrimp, right? Absolutely. Yeah. You can use um, you know, shrimp. Um, mm -hmm. Another or one of my favorite um, dishes, spring roll, I like. I get um, another thing we have in the islands in the Caribbean. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people don't think about it, but I take um, codfish. Oh yeah, cod fritters, yeah. Codfish, I use it in that too, but yeah, I would use mm -hmm. bok choy, is another Japanese yeah. cabbage, yeah. and I julienne the um, bok mm -hmm. choy and mm -hmm. add it in there with the some tomatoes, all yeah. that goes with it, and um, it works. So great. we should do a show just on uh, you know these wraps. Absolutely, yeah. and you can use you know so, and you don't have to do it. Right then, then you can always do it the day before, mm -hmm. and you wrap it well and keep it in your refrigerator, mm -hmm. and then you just fry. It. Mm -hmm. 
the, the two ends. For this wonderful recipe and more, please log on to my website. Ooh la la, what can I say? I'm New York State Assemblyman Ken Zabrowski, and you're watching Ula International, great food with an accent. Welcome back to Ula International, great food with an accent. I'm showing you a very easy appetizer. There is no cooking required. It's a schinken board. A schinken board is a piece of black bread with butter and ham. That's all there is to it. And we top it with a gherkin. So um, I choose French butter because the fat content is higher than uh, butter we usually have here in the United States. And that means fat is equal um, taste. So it tastes really good. So this is done. I cut the bread in halves and then in triangles and simply top them with schinken. It's a, schinken is actually the German version of prosciutto. Other than prosciutto though, it's smoked and not air cured. These little gherkins are actually called cornichons. They are French pickles and they are sour as opposed to sweet gherkins we have here. And voila, this is schinken mode. Schinken mode, so simple and so delicious. The ulala way. Today I'm showing you how to make potato pancakes the German way. So potato pancakes are a staple food in Germany, Switzerland and Austria. So if you have nothing in your house, you definitely have potatoes. And I made a batter here. I grated two large potatoes, um, seasoned them with a little bit of salt, you know, mixed, mixed them with an egg and a little bit of oatmeal. And we are ready to fry them off. Our oil is hot. Voila. So when you grate potatoes, um, they have a tendency to release much more water as they sit, and you always have to, you know, spoon it off just like I do right now. So the potato pancakes have to cook for like two, three minutes on the side and a good, good sign uh, to flip them over is, is when the, the outside turns a little bit brown. Our potato pancakes are now ready and we can take them out of the pan and let them drain on paper towel for a while and also cool down a little bit uh, until they are really easy to handle. And once we are done, they are cooled down. We top them with a little bit of sour cream, some salmon and chives and they are ready to eat. Mm. Delicious. These are potato pancakes, the Ulala way. On this episode of When in Doubt, Don't Throw It Out, I show you what to do with leftovers. So with this leftover asparagus, I will be making a very simple sauce for 
pasta or rice or potatoes. So I take the leftover spares and cut them up over an angle in like half inch pieces or so. Okay, my butter is now hot enough, so let me dump in the asparagus. So the only thing I have to do with this asparagus is to heat it and add a little bit of pepper so it was seasoned before so we don't need salt. And add a little bit of heavy cream. Okay, the sauce is now uh, finished right away, but I prefer to round it up with some grated Parmesan cheese. And that makes it really a wonderful thing to eat over pasta, over potatoes, over rice, or whatever you like. Okay, it's done now. Leftover asparagus, the ulala way. It's wonderful. Thank you for joining us on our journey around the world. Please join us next time right here on Ula International. Great food with an accent.